Hi everyone and welcome to this second video in the thermochemistry unit. Uh, this video is going to be focused on uh, more of the first law of thermodynamics along with internal energy um, and how that can be transferred. Internal energy is actually the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energies of everything within the system. And this is denoted by the capital E. Usually we don't measure the internal energy itself, we just measure the change in energy. When you see the delta, that means change in. So typically what we do is we measure the change in energy. This is because a system undergoes a change, um, which means it could either be work done on the system or heat being transferred. And so because there's this change, that's what we want to calculate. And you can see this picture that you have. We have the initial state of the system. And if we notice, this first arrow points down. Um, so that means that we're losing energy to get down to the final or we're absorbing energy to get up to the final. This arrow is what we're focused on. We're focused on the change in energy. So delta E is just the final energy minus the initial. Um, we don't actually use this equation. It's just important to know that the change is between the two states. The reason that we don't use this equation is because delta E is determined experimentally. So we actually have to find delta E in a lab. Um, and with this delta E, this is called a thermodynamic quantity. Thermodynamic quantities have three parts. It has a number, it has a unit, and it has a sign. So the number gives us the value, the unit gives us um, the magnitude of the number, and the sign tells us essentially like the direction, if you think of vectors. So we need a number, a unit, and a sign for any thermodynamic quantity. So with changes in internal energy, remember that we're focusing on the system. Our focus is always on the system, never the surroundings. So if the system absorbs energy, so if your change is greater than zero, right? think about like if you absorb money, your bank account is positive. So if the system absorbs energy, this energy change is called endergonic. Right. Now, these values um, or these quantities with the delta E is dealing with energy. That's endergonic. Um, gonic means work. So this is focusing on energy, not heat. Right? Energy change. So if energy is absorbed, it's endergonic. So your energy of your system increases, energy of the surroundings decreases. If the change in energy is less than zero, so the system releases energy, this is exergonic. So the energy of the system decreases because it lost it and the surroundings will gain some energy. So we're focusing here on a system gaining or losing energy. Um, a system can gain or lose energy in two ways heat and work. So our internal energy, this is kinetic plus potential, but when we think about transferring the energy, there are two ways it can be transferred, heat and work. So an energy is exchanged, is exchanged either as heat, which is Q, or work, which is W. Remember, these are both energies, right? Heat is energy, work is energy. Um, they just describe different, different aspects. So Delta E, okay, change in energy, is equal to Q plus W, right? Because when energy is exchanged, remember, energy is never created nor destroyed. It's just transferred. So delta E equals Q plus W. Um, so when heat is added to a system or work is done on a system, okay, delta E is going to increase. You can think about changes in internal energy like a bank account, like I said. Um, if we think about the inside of the safe as our system, um, if he is gained or work is done on the system, you're putting money into the safe, right? So delta E is greater than zero. If it is 
losing heat or work is done by the system, right? So that takes energy, then that is thought of as taking money out of the safe. And so then delta E is going to be less than zero. So looking at delta E, Q, and W and their signs and what it means. So for Q, remember Q is heat. If it's positive, the system gains heat. If it's negative, the system loses heat. Uh, for W, this is one that you might have to, to memorize this one to think about. But if it's positive, work is done on the system. If it's negative, work is done by the system. Positive is on the system, negative is done by the system. Uh, and then for delta E, uh, positive means you have a net gain of energy, negative means you have a net loss. Remember that delta E is equal to Q plus W. So now we're going to focus on the exchange of heat between the system and the surroundings. So when heat is absorbed by the system, this is endothermic. Re remember endo means into. So if it if heat is going into the system, it's endothermic. And um, this gives you a nice visual here showing heat going into the system. And then this also shows you an endothermic reaction. So heat is being absorbed by the system. Uh, and so your temperature of your surroundings drops. And then when heat is released by the system, okay, so Think of it as leaving the system. The process is exothermic. So exo means out of. So when heat is released by the system, it's exothermic. Um, you have the visual here showing delta H, right? We will talk about enthalpy later, um, but think about this as Q, right? If Q is less than zero, it's exothermic. Um, and here is an example of a very violent reaction, probably a thermite reaction. So just an example problem. Um, calculate the change in the internal energy of the system for a process in which the system absorbs 140 joules of heat and does 85 joules of work on the surroundings. So I want you to take a second, look back at your notes, think about Q, W, and delta E. Um, see if you can assign the correct signs and calculate delta E. So pause it here, see if you can solve it, and then come back. So solution to that problem. To find the change in internal energy, which is delta E, we're going to use delta E equals Q plus W. Um, so it is positive 140 joules because it said that the energy was absorbed, so it's endothermic. Um, and then your work is negative because it said the system is doing the work. Um, so when the system does the work, it's negative. Um, and so when you add those together, you get 55 joules. Remember, you need a sign, which is positive, the number, and the unit. And to end this video, we're going to talk about state functions and what that means. Um, so usually we have no way of knowing the internal energy. Like I said, that has to be determined experimentally. Um, and so finding the value of internal energy is actually a very complex problem. However, we do know that the internal energy is independent of the path that it takes to get to the, to the final. So what that means is, with this example, the water can reach room temperature either from cooling down or from warming up. Okay, so what it means by being independent of the path is it doesn't matter whether we're cooling down or warming up as long as it gets to that final state. So internal energy is what is called a state function. A state function depends only on the present state of the system, not the path that it takes to get there. So to summarize the state function, it's independent of path. So what that means is it doesn't matter how I get to school. It doesn't matter if I drive up Pleasant Valley Road or if I go up to Harrison City Export Road as long as I get to the school. Okay, so we can think of it like that, right? The change in distance, it doesn't matter as long as I get there. So it's independent of path, and it depends only on the initial and the final states. 
So if you think about the example, it only matters that I start at my house and I end at school. Right? That means that it is independent of the path. And a state function, in this case internal energy, is designated by uppercase letter E. So a state function, these last three bullet points just describe any state function. So it's independent of the path. Typically when it says independent of the path, what that means is we're finding the change in. So if you're finding change in energy, change in enthalpy, um, later we're going to talk about change in entropy. right? So if you're finding the change in something, that's going to be a state function. It depends only on the initial and the final states. Or if it's designated by a capital letter, that also tells you it's probably going to be a state function. So internal energy, delta E, depends only on the initial and the final states, and it's a state function. However, Q and W, notice they're both lowercase, heat and work, are not state functions. Um, whether the battery in this example is shorted out or um, if it's discharged by running the fan, the delta E is the same, right? The energy lost is going to be the same. But the heat and the work are going to be different in both cases. So in case A, okay, there's no fan here, so energy is only lost by heat. In the example with the fan, energy can be lost by both heat from the motor and work that's being done on the fan. So heat and work are not state functions. It depends how we get to where we, to where we need to go. So generally, quantities we look at the change in are state functions. So if it's delta something, it's generally a state function. Quantities that we don't look at the changes in, like heat and work, are not state functions. Right? It, de it depends how much heat we have throughout the entire process. We don't find delta Q, right? We find Q. It's, that's not a state function.